Good morning. Welcome to Winnipeg. I am expecting Missy the dog any minute because about five minutes ago she went that way. <laughs> okay, I've been here at the model table for about an hour already. I got all the rest of the pieces for step 42. And <clears throat> you know those little tops that we have to put on the, uh, the photo etch number 12s? We have to make six little valves. One of the viewers was suggesting that maybe just leave them brass, they might look better. I think the painting and marking guide wants us to paint them red. Uh, but maybe, hey, just leave them, leave them brass. Why not? Uh, save painting them, save making a mess. And where those little uh, taps go on the valves, uh, it is... Uh, Remember yesterday I was saying that one of them got bent? Uh, it was sort of a valve, valve stem. I think it's this one right here. It's got a little bit bent. Let's see if we can straighten that. It's not bent very bad. As near as I can tell what those are is some sort of maybe pressure relief valves that you would open up wh when you first turn the engine over to make sure that there's no fluids or anything inside the cylinder so that it doesn't hydraulic if you were to start it otherwise. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Uh, and my grandfather had a, I mentioned this before, he had an old John Deere Model D tractor. And I actually started that tractor. And to start it, it had no electric starter. You, you spun the flywheel. And uh, what you would do is, you, there, was a, there was a valve on the side of each cylinder. It was a, it was a two-cylinder thing. You know, it, it, it fired an awful lot like my motorcycle. It didn't fire evenly like this. It fired like this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There must be a reason why they do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, you, you'd open these little valves up and if you wanted to, you could put a, 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 about a, a milliliter of gasoline into the cup and then draw it into the cylinder to sort of prime it. And that kind of worked. When the, when the engine was cold and uh, yeah I can remember starting that thing I started it a lot actually uh, after after grandpa died I kept going out to the farm uh, and uh, anyway not, we didn't actually do any farming it was just sort of a hobby thing at the end there but uh, <clears throat> anyway uh, enough about the farm tractor uh, yeah, we got all our pieces here. There's there's more than I thought. I I I, I forgot the, that you know you you see that here on on the on the guide, in the manual. But then it says make six. <laughs> so you got a picture six of what you see there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, all all this stuff over here is cleaned up, but all of this has to be has to be the flashing removed off of it. But I think first of all, maybe what we're going to do, we're going to do two things. We're going to put the macro lens on and see if we can straighten this, this one little valve right here, or valve stem. And uh, the other thing is, when I was nipping uh, the, these longer skinny little pieces of spaghetti off of the sprue, I was using a technique that I... I, I didn't really, I do it, un, did it unconscious, unconsciously, but it's a technique I use in order to not break the piece at, when, the, when the nipper cuts through. And I thought I should just pass that on. Probably most of you already do it. But this, it's what I do. And I think uh, the, we'll put the macro lens on here in a few minutes and actually do that. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, uh, showing, uh, removing the flashing, or in fact, I probably won't show it and do any of that because, in order to do a good job on a real delicate part, I don't want to be trying to do it in front of a lens. It's just a lot easier if I can just get it. Oh, uh, Missy the dog is here. I gotta go. Are you home? I'm coming. <laughs>
Hello, Missy. I was watching for you, but I didn't see you. Morning, Max. Good morning, Ross. Is that a good one? Should we go talk to Max? All right. Uh, I was so engrossed in uh, doing my opening remarks that I didn't see you coming. Were you waiting long? No. No, oh, good. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> you can tell her <clears throat> she really feels at home when she lies down like that. Really? She's relaxed, she's not on alert. So you felt right at home, did you, Missy? You felt right at home, well that's nice. How are the opening remarks going? Uh, I, I just uh, was talking about a little piece that I had broken and I was going to put the macro lens on and fix it. And and then I mentioned how I was going to show a technique I, I used for removing very delicate stuff from the screw without breaking the little delicate piece. Oh. <laughs> and that's what we'll be, we will be doing next. It's probably not going to be much of an episode today. Uh, a lot of what I want to do, I have to do off camera, so, yeah. It's going to 30 degrees, so. 30? Uh -huh. Oh my, that's going to be beautiful. I better right. get out this morning then. Yeah. We might, 30 degrees, we could have uh, th thunder showers this afternoon. It's possible. Yeah. Is, that, is that what we're going to have, Missy? Are we going to have thunder showers? Hmm? Okay, I think I'm gonna turn the camera off here. Oh, she's got a scratch or something. Oh, a sneeze. <laughs> you made some sort of movement with purpose so she can sense that, whoop, maybe he's getting up. Not getting up? Okay, I'll come back. <laughs> She's a pretty finely tuned sense of what we're doing and when we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, all right, she watches our body language. Exactly. Well, is, is my body's language now showing that I'm going to turn the camera off, huh? Is that what's going to happen? Oh, I've got the camera twisted the wrong way. Well, it's a good thing it looks out the side. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to turn the camera off here. Yeah, here we go. sit back down, I say, Missy the dog, Missy the dog. All right, now we can continue on. Where were we? Uh, yeah, we were going to put the macro lens on. And we were going to repair this piece right here. Uh, yeah, I can't remember if the camera was running when I was telling Max outside that the today's episode is probably going to be a little bit, maybe a little shorter. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've, I've sort of lost my train of thought here at the model table. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to go to 30 degrees outside today. That's that's pretty nice. Uh, so uh, 
that would mean uh, I might want to get in my my quick scoot, you know, around mid morning instead of uh, later in the afternoon. Uh, okay, let's do that. Let's let's get our macro lens on here. Pardon my reach. And uh, oh, I think I mentioned this before, but in case somebody's wondering, what is this little stick for on the macro lens? Well, if for quick focusing. I put this stick in front of the lens and I, and I know that the end, the end of that stick is the closest that, that I can get with this lens. Now, now this lens will, will also uh, uh, focus to infinity. Like if I could look out the window and count the bricks that are across the street in the neighbor's house. Um, <clears throat> okay, Let, let's get at it here. We had a very smoky sunrise this morning, but not so smoky that we couldn't see it come up. And our walkers did come by. A little bit earlier, but they came by. Amazon just delivered this about half an hour ago, I guess. And I think what's happened is in yesterday's episode, I had said something to the effect of that I wasn't feeling good or let, misled people. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, what, what this is all about is just, just to, I wanted to try this for arthritis pain. Uh, backache, joint, muscle, arthritis pain. That's, I don't know if it's any different from Tylenol or, or not. So I thought I'd just sort of give this a try. Um, yeah, it, it was uh, 24 tablets for $5 and change delivered to the house. I figured, I'd, you know, give, give it a try. So, uh, yeah, okay, enough about this. Well, I'm just going to take one of these and uh, let it have a chance to set in. And then probably, actually very quick soon, I'm going to be going out on the bike, so... Let's uh, let's get this episode wound up here. Uh, as I mentioned, it's probably going to be short. Uh, okay. Okay. Here's the one in question, and uh, you can see where the plastic is kind of whitened a little bit. That's where the that's where the uh, problem is. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this piece of uh, sprue. I'm going to do it off camera because I'm afraid that if I try to do it on camera I could accidentally break this joint. And then uh, maybe uh, take and put a little bit of extra thin on it to, to soften the plastic and, and just try and straighten it out. Maybe if I was to hold it you know, like like this somehow in the helping hands. Yeah, that might be a good idea. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just try that after I get this piece of flashing off. Okay, now did I say I was gonna do this off camera? I think if I'm careful I can do it on camera. Now we got that little piece of the flashing still on there right I think what's going to happen is the uh, when I put the extra thin on there it's probably going to all being well take care of that and this the, it, it, it is so small we're not going to see it I'm afraid if I try to you know take it take it down uh, I just can't turn this thing around I have so much fun trying to do stuff on camera that I shouldn't be. Maybe if I was to hold it down with the tweezer somehow. Mm -hmm. 
I better quit here. I'm probably going to end up breaking this thing at the, at the, at the uh, fracture there. Okay, I've got some extra thin here, and as you can see, I've got this thing hanging instead of going the other way. And the idea is that if I get too much on there, it will it won't glue itself to the to the tweezer. I'm just trying to soften that joint there. I'm pretty sure that. Uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure it goes all the way around. Now, can I shove this over? How can I grab onto that? Give it a bit of a twist. grab it with my fingers but that, that wouldn't be a good idea maybe if I come in from the back dried. Let's try these tweezers. They kind of hook a little bit differently. How's that look? Well, it's straighter, but it's getting messy, isn't it? Let's let that dry. Let's move on to something else. Now, earlier I was talking about when I nip parts like this off of the sprue, and I don't want to accidentally s snap this, this pipe off right here when it snips. So this is this is what I do, and I'm sure that Probably most of you do this anyway. Okay, now, if if I'm thinking about it, when, when I put the nipper in like this, and if I sort of put pressure this way as I'm nipping, in other, in other words, against the sprue part, instead of out this way, when it, when it nips, and when it cuts, it's not gonna all this, your, your, your uh, cutter is not going to spring this way and break this piece off and so so what what i try to do is 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 squeeze with pressure this way okay here we go okay now still got to be careful though okay uh that was my little tip. And that's the way I do it, or try to do it. And sometimes I forget. But you know, I'm going to call her quits for today, folks. Uh, what time we got here? It's seven minutes to one already, and I still haven't gone out for my quick scoot. So uh, I'm going to call her quits. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.